Here is Bob. He owns a business. Bob had his uncle's cousin's nephew build him a website. Unfortunately, that website looks like a website that was built in Bob's uncle's cousin's mom's basement. Don't be like Bob. Let a professional build your website. If you want an affordable website that looks expensive and a website that can be found by your customers, visit don'tbelikebob.com and let them know you heard about them on this show to get 10% off. It's pretty fancy. We can vote. Yeah. Yeah, but not Very quite cool. illegally drink alcohol. So that's two episodes from now. I yep. miss those days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I can drink now. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so um, how this show works for the uninitiated, for those tuning in, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, I pull questions out of this jar or bucket, and I call it a jucket, and that's not a derogatory term. Okay. Uh and we read off the question or topic and we decide, does this pass or fail the dress code? Meaning, yes, we will talk about it, or no, we won't. And if we say no, then I take that topic and save it for another episode. And most of the time, those ones that don't get approval never end up being approved. <laughs> With good reason. Yeah. So, yeah they're, pre- they're pretty garbage. Uh, <laughs> so shall we uh, get started? Oh, yes, please. All right. Shall. Perfect. Great songs with terrible music videos. Think of any? Talk about it? Yes or no? <laughs> hmm. I don't the Jeopardy music on the sound. I like the topic. I just don't know if I can think of any great okay, songs. Yeah. With That's where I'm at. It's a great topic, Tab but I have no examples. We t- we talk, should we talk about it? Sure. Okay, we're just talking about, about it. If about anybody's got one, they got one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, th- we'll dig one up. But that's That Mick Jagger and David Bowie video from back in the 80s. That was oh, yeah. Dancing yeah. in the Streets. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Was, I'm going to take this shirt off right now. It looks like I stole it from one of those guys. I'm trying to think. Good song with a cruddy video. Feet don't feel me now, Todd Rundgren. Oh, he's surprising because the song was totally amazing, but the yeah. video was okay. like they spent twelve bucks on it or something. I'm not gonna say it's a great <laughs> song. What, what was that Herbie Hancock song? Oh, with the stupid yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking. Is it about. Rocket? I don't know, but it was like that's the best you can do is get these really crappy robots. <laughs> um. Herbie oh, Hancock. No, yeah. that's, a, that's a lousy song and a lousy video. I'm trying to I was thinking of The Warrior, and now but it's in the my song head. is stuck. Nice. The, the song is called Rocket. It is called okay. Rocket. Yeah. Rocket, yeah. That one scared my wife when she was young. She <laughs> yeah. <was> ruined. <clears throat> she was intrigued by the music, but scared by the video. Yeah. See, Tom Petty had a lot of wonderful songs, but the music videos were pretty awkward. Yeah, like uh, you got lucky. That space in the future. Yeah, thing. I was kind of yeah. like, yeah. Yep. I remember the documentary. Tom's like, that was like the first video without, okay, with the intro instead of just straight to the song, man. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a crappy video, but it's pretty lame. I melt with you by Modern English. Oh, that music video is pretty cheesy. That's a cool song. I like but, that song. For the but video. yeah, that video was like. Anything by Human League. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Flock of Seagulls. Oh, Iran. that's the worst. The yep. song's good, but the video. Yeah, oh, terrible. It's a great video. song. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of those new wave artists in the 80s, the videos were terrible. I love the, the keyboard song. action. Yeah. It's like a, like a trans- transitional phase. They were trying to figure oh, out what to do. Okay. And, right. <laughs> yeah, I'd never seen the video, just the, the new the song. Yeah, yeah that's... You've never seen, seen like a year the video. video. They're great. Oh. Do you guys remember the band Boot Camp from the 80s? Mm-hmm. No. They were one of the first bands to ever be featured on MTV, and I discovered it because uh, VH1 Classic was doing like 25 year anniversary of the launch of MTV. They're airing the lineup of the music videos as they aired that first day, which was a pretty cool concept. So they aired all the videos as they would be aired with like no advertisements, which was pretty cool. And this band called Boot Camp had already made two music videos, and they were just cheesy new wave rock. Well, songs and the one of the songs was called "I'm a Victim of Your Love," <laughs> and the video was wait for it. Right. Right. The like video was wait right. for it in a courtroom, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in the jury's like, "I'm a victim." <laughs> oh, no. And the singer's like, "Of your 
loaf. <laughs> I'll tell you what, does anybody in here else remember where they were uh, when MTV first aired? <laughs> no. Ten years before conception. I was, I was say. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Didn't you think for sure? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'm, sure I'm, I'm dating, you know, we're showing <laughs> our age. I was in, actually, in the Bullseye Bar, which was a, one of the meanest bars in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the time. Totally underage. I was 16 <laughs> years old. Yeah, my cousin brought me up to Fayetteville. We had moved down there for a short stint. And, uh, yeah, I was waiting for him to get done doing what he was doing. And I'm watching the TV, and, and it aired late. Oh, they had yeah. some, some issues. Oh, sure. And I'm like, huh, wonder if this is going to come on. And then finally, yep, uh, there it was. I was like, well, that was like so, yeah. August 81, I think. August 1st, 1981. There you yep. go. Yeah, so, when I saw it, like one year and one month before I was born. Yeah, <laughs> when I saw it, they were airing it August first, two thousand six, two thousand six. So it was interesting to watch that. It was. Yeah. It used to be fun. Yeah, I liked it. It was all music videos and yeah. uh, minimal. And actually watching like old clips from like Headbangers Ball mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. awkward to watch because the bands clearly did not want to be on the show. They were just forced by like law to be interviewed by Ricky Ratman. <laughs> <Right, right. laughs> Right. And Ricky's like trying to fit in, and like all these bands are like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Golden Age Beavis and Butthead with the music video. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like they did those DVD sets of them that yeah. I got in college, and I was like, yes. There's like none of the music videos. Yes, just the cartoons. Like, so yeah. disappointing. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember a lot of those interviews. Like, Ricky's like, so you guys like, you play music? What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's fine. It's fine. It's our living. That's what we do. It's what we do. <laughs> like, no, like, how is it? Yeah, <laughs> like you guys get like guys do a lot of like gas station surfing and like what? <laughs> like it's trying to sound cool. Like you guys are like so you're like a part of the grunge thing, right? Like what's that? What's that like? <laughs> like okay, sure. I'm gonna throw the MTV version of Ginger or Marianne, Martha Quinn, Nina Blackwood. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Don't tell mm -hmm. Julie Brown. No, yeah. she's not in the equation. Uh, she's she's not not the okay, equation. Original. I'm going to have to go with Nina. That's like throwing in Mrs. Howell. Trick question. Tell us no, the story. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I was Nina Blackwood all the way. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I was Ginger all the way. What if someone says Mark Good? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, that's okay. That's okay. That's <laughs> right. Whatever works. Things are different. So you know, Matt yeah. Pinfield. We've come a long way. <laughs> See, I liked not in not a sexual way but I liked Matt Pinfield <laughs> because of, like he was the one that knew about each artist's music and asked them questions about right. the music and all the artists loved talking to him but everyone else hated Ricky Rap yep <laughs> God. <laughs> you could tell Ricky loved the crap out of like Poison and oh, who didn't yeah <laughs> Wasn't my bag, wasn't, although I did listen to Flesh and Blood back when I got into everything else. Uh, <laughs> I did go to a hair metal fest once in Brandon, like 16 years ago. It was LA Guns, Rat, Firehouse, uh, Dokken, and Warrant. That'd be a good show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, uh, Janie Lane, I was like eight years old, and I'm like, Janie Lane is swearing way too much. <laughs> is that out of the raceway? Or? Yeah, 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 back yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, Dockin sounded pretty good, but my dad was like, ah, Dockin doesn't sound great, but Red Beach does. Grassy <laughs> <laughs> Vex says Kennedy, and then oh, uh, Kennedy, oh, Kennedy yes. yeah. And Janie Douglas just says, you guys rock. Or you guys rock. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other videos you guys think about the top of your head? Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Next question, Johnny, would you like to pass the bucket around? Oh, sure. <laughs> There's stick, no spiders in here, right? See so how I can keep my hand in there with the spider in no, there? No, that was last this week. This is Fear Factor okay. edition of, yeah. of Josh. Right. Joe, Joe Rogan's going to come S through. Stick and your hand in the Josh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greatest theme songs ever. I'll talk Ooh, about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Uh, Does that mean anything? Anything. Movie, yeah. TV. Yeah. Anything. Gosh. Godfather. Is a classic. Mission uh, Impossible. Yeah. The yeah. original. Yeah. Good. Uh, the bad. The ugly. We do, oh, yeah. we do a little rip from the monsters theme. Yeah. The right. monster. That's monsters was great. Yep. Yeah. 
Batman. Yep. Which uh, the Hans Zimmer newer stuff or the Danny Elfman like 1980 or Batman? Or the 60s Adam West stuff. 60s Adam West. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's. Uh, it's got that surfy vibe too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kids in the Hall theme. Some of us like that. That band is quite underrated. If you look like Shadowy Men on Shadowy Planet. Planet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, They're incredible. Uh, King of the Hill. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. The refreshments. Yep. Yeah. Now there's somebody else. It's Roger Klein, the pacemakers. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. There's some legal issues there. And yeah. He comes to town every couple of years. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. Yeah. We had him not too long ago. Was it District or Icon the last time? I feel like it was Icon. It might have been the Icon last time. I think it was the District the time before that. Yeah. But, yeah. Other theme songs. Star uh, Wars. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. As yeah. cheesy as it was, I do like the Cheers theme. Yeah, and it's cheesy, but it's yeah, not like what is it. up with those lyrics though. Yeah, that that song is like off the rails, especially you get in like the second verse that's not on the like show or whatever. Yeah. like because I was like looking it up for a bit we were doing on one of the other podcasts, and I was like, yeah. oh my god, this thing just keeps going, and it, like lyrics <laughs> keep getting weirder and weirder. I'm like, is this really the theme? Yeah. <laughs> the intro music for the ex or the uh, Exorcist. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For its yeah. time, you know. Green I Acres. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. In your hand, it's six. Green Acres. Oh. Twin Peaks. Yeah. 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 Uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. There you go. That's why they all like whenever I see a synthesizer and I just. <laughs> <laughs> then you break right into Van Halen's jump. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. I did right. that last okay. time. Uh, <laughs> Lee Burns' Suicide is Painless, which is the theme to Mash. Uh, Mash. Yeah. That's a damn good one. Yeah. Yep. Pet Cemetery, the Ramones. Yeah. Oh, there right. you go. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that one. What about Aftermath? <laughs> <laughs> the one with Jamie Fall. <laughs> Ultraman's pretty good. <laughs> Ultraman. <laughs> that one'll stick with you like uh, oatmeal on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're gonna do that. The theme from the Thunderbirds TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Why did I say it that way? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a great thing. For those of you watching, these are very ancient television. <laughs> Gigantor. That was a good one. Again, was, we're, we're showing our age. Right? I know. Oh, yes. Well, I don't watch much TV. You know, I although I do have a fondness for Criminal Minds because that's pretty twisted. <laughs> but I mean, when you when I do catch a modern TV show, and I really don't go to enough movies. Uh, the themes never stand out. No. They're just there to lead you in. Right. It seemed like they used to be part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Well, that and TV, it, you, you used to get the like story ones where it was like the theme song had to explain the premise of this show. Right. Whereas now it's like you get three seconds to play some kind of theme and cram it in before we got to cram in more commercials. Yes. Right. Yes. Or they do like a G flat and the title of the show, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like. Gilligan's Island. We all know. Yeah, it. Yeah. 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 We all yeah. know what's happening. Brady it's, Bunch. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Barney Miller. Yeah. That bass line. Oh. That was a good Even though thing. Sanford and Son doesn't have lyrics, I like to think it does. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just go, wah, wah, water. <laughs> wah, wah, water. <laughs> <laughs> Any other themes? Jefferson's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Whenever I'm like going up an elevator, I just go, <laughs> moving on up. Everyone's like, shut up. <laughs> like, you get it. <laughs> or a lot of my friends are like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sam with the Bell was so bad, but it was such a good theme song. <laughs> yeah. Star Trek. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm trying to think of like the best recent theme song, but there's not a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a recent Unbreakable one that... Kimmy Schmidt <clears throat> is a pretty good theme. It's just, yeah. The core, it's just, Unbreakable. Damn right. <laughs> like that that Adventure Time cartoon with the what's his face the the guy that actually like animated and created it just picked up a ukulele and just hammered something out as a placeholder. Oh, sure. And then that has actually become one of the most like iconic themes of all time because they just kept it in there because they're like, no, that's perfect. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Just, know, they might be giants. Did a lot of theme songs for yeah, they did. Malcolm in the Middle and yeah. Does SpongeBob count? Oh yeah, I count that. There you go. That's a good there one. you go. Yeah. Ween tends to get associated with SpongeBob at this point with Ocean Man and everything. <laughs> but it's not the theme technically, but 
you get associated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now it's something else, and it left. Yeah, I guess Game of Thrones theme song. You hear that right away. You know, you're like that. Shit, people are about to like get stabbed or have their hands cut off or something. <laughs> <That's so ridiculous. laughs> I've never seen it. Uh, the show, the show Angie or Tribeca. Incest. Yeah, the show Angie Tribeca on uh, TBS. It's like an airplane spoof, like detective okay. comedy okay. with Rashida Jones. An uh, airplane spoof detective comedy. Well, it's not like airplane. It's like a st- in the style of airplane. Oh, oh, okay. Like silly detective, like a joke every two seconds. Like an airplane like, detective. How many cases can they have? No. It's really specialized. <laughs> That's a great case of the flying airplane. <laughs> <laughs> That's we got, what, what, happened this, what happened this week, Bob? Another stolen airplane. It's always a stolen airplane. <laughs> a case of the Mile High Club. <laughs> well, there you go. I've got to use the bathroom really <laughs> Open up! But you know, I think, oh, but they just write back uh, every episode. They start with like a cheesy detective, like 10 second long rock. Then you could hear a guy yelling, yeah! But it's just some guy like getting hit, hurt. They cut to the first scene oh, nice. and he's like getting hurt, like a pot of coffee <laughs> laid in his hand. What like, show is ah! this? Oh. Uh, Angie Tribeca. It's with Rashida Jones. The first scene is always hit that guy, like they cut to him in the office, like hurting himself, getting kicked in the nads, or like. (laughs) 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 That's really. Like graphics and everything for it, like time with it. And he's holding a hot pot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then walking away. That's, look at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Scooby Doo's great. Johnny Quest. Yeah. Uh, Chris Elliott used to be on a show called Get a Life from the early 90s. And the theme song was Stand by REM. Yes. I <laughs> like, that. Yep. Stan. Stan. <laughs> Spam in my office at work. It's a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> Name a song I'll know if Weird Al parodied or not. That's what it looks like. <laughs> the like song the is just of. six words long. The song is just six. <laughs> oh, God. Couldn't think of any lyrics. <laughs> a whole lot of rhyming lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see the real video when you do that. No, George Harrison yeah. just... <laughs> it is a Hawaiian shirt. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> hey, George is cool now. <laughs> like... Styling. <laughs> Styling. <laughs> Next topic. Yeah, I've run out of theme. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, would you like to do the honors? Yes, yeah, may I? Absolutely. Please pass the, let's do this officially. <laughs> I put a spider in there. So. Yeah, okay. watch out for that. <laughs> it's going deep. It's going, can I smell your finger when you get it out of there? <laughs> I was thinking of something <laughs> equally as bad. Let me do this again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you? For those of you at home, did you just, <laughs> you just yeah. For your viewing pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing a lot of people don't know about you? <laughs> now, I'm assuming that would mean us. Us, any of us. Any of yeah. us. One thing we would eat. In general, sure. yes. Sure. I'll talk about it. Sure, I got nothing to hide. Yeah. I think the statute for that's still done. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you want me to start? Sure. Should, all right. Sure. Uh, we'll just work our way around. Sure. I have one kidney. Really? What? Well, I was born with one. Oh. Yeah. I didn't find out till I was twelve, when I got my pegs out. The doc goes, "You only only have one, right?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> so you were born this way? You did. Yep. Wow. Yep. And I drink way too many energy drinks, so I feel like I'm screwed at any given point. So. <laughs> kind of like Lady Gaga. You were born this way. <laughs> I was going to say it, but I didn't want to. Th- so thank you wow. for throwing oh, yourself on that grenade. Yeah, thanks for going there. <laughs> oh, this way. One candy today. <laughs> That's possible. Really hard to right, get next. <laughs> About 30 years ago, I bought a kidney on the black market. <laughs> Just kidding. It was a tiny one, like a baby one. <laughs> oh, no. right? Uh, wow. So. Now here's my thing. Uh, I was in the Air Force for a long time, an Air National Guard, and I'm afraid of heights. Oh. Flew in airplanes all the time, didn't bother me, but boy, I get 20 feet up a ladder, 
Vertigo or yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, like huh. I gotta just stand there until I like chill out. So huh. but that's it. That's my kryptonite right there. Yeah. Wow. Well, I never knew. Yeah. I'll go up. And I gotta. <laughs> I just gotta like take my time and like get over. Of course, over. I we've never gotten high together. I mean, well, no, wait. Well, no, no. there was the Actually, 80s. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because we graduated. Yeah, we went to high school together. No, but we've never been in a. I guess you and I have never been in a situation where we've been up high on anything. <laughs> I looked over the side of Hoover Dam when we were out in Vegas, and I just went, am I supposed to be sweating out of my palm? <laughs> <laughs> there was sweat coming out of there. <laughs> then my knees started getting weak, and I'm like, if I puke, it's going to go 700 feet down. <laughs> it's going to be so cool. I like... I had to step back, and, and once I got behind the glass, that whole creening effect or whatever, where it's gonna like <laughs> swoop back. It's probably swoop back <laughs> up, and yeah, I never thought of that. I'm glad I didn't puke, but boy, if someone's like, I'm terrified of heights. What's your job? I paint houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's never gone well. <laughs> yeah. so I get guys that come into where I work in my day job, and they climb towers, and they're like, "We'll take you up there." And I said, oh, "It's not gonna be much fun when I'm hanging by the safety equipment twenty feet off the ground." Yeah. <laughs> Passed out. I respect your fear of heights. <laughs> yeah, it's really not the fear of heights. This is the falling and landing part that I think it's the sudden about. stop at the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the rearrangement of your innards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it can be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No experience with it at all. I saw the upsides with Brian Cranston last week and all that. I got paragliding. Is whose character went paragliding? That's how he. Became a quadriplegic, so yeah. So I, I think that that movie's a terrible advertisement for paragliding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do not go paragliding. <laughs> Amazing, no big paragliding didn't like get that stopped. <laughs> what if they sponsored that film? <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, guys! <laughs> Great, they suck. God. Oh. Oh. Now, if it's something people don't know about us, like what percentage of the population doesn't know this about? It's, it's a good the chunk. Average person, a other, good chunk. Other than people who don't know us from, you know, the, our, our our formative years right. and yeah, and general public, general general public would know this. Hmm. Or even stuff that close friends of yours like what? <laughs> it's news to me. <laughs> I'm gonna think of something, but anything obscure like that, I've already spilled my guts like a thousand times on different podcasts. So. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, 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 I guess I, most people don't know that when I was in college, I was an EMT for about a year. Well, no. I was actually pursuing, thinking about having a real job at one point in my life. <laughs> and I thought, you know, a buddy talked me into doing it. Our hometown paid for the training. And all that meant is we had to, like, when we came back for summers, we'd have to do ambulance crew work in a small town. Yeah. Armor, South Dakota. <laughs> Douglas County. See, exotic armor. So... We would do that, and then I thought, well, you know, you can't rely on all that student aid they give you, so maybe I'll get a job. Because yeah. even though we were playing in bands, we weren't playing enough to make enough. So I got a job at the hospital in Brookings, and so when we weren't uh, working on the floor, we'd answer all the ambulance calls. Oh. And it was that experience that led me to realize I don't want to do this for a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's one of those you can only that that's got a short shelf life unless you're just I mean, unless you really yeah, really into we had it. some people that were really into it and really good. I think I was okay, yeah. but it's disgusting. Did you ever scrape up anybody that fell from heights? <laughs> <laughs> Do motorcycles count? Ooh. Yeah, that hurts a lot. Yeah, that's why I play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ryan, what that's about it. you? That's, that's I'm gonna go. I'm gonna follow your lead there. Um, I was born with mislocated lenses, oh. which they were way up high on my eye. Oh. So legally blind when I was born, I could see color. I could see. I couldn't make anything out, mm -hmm. and so I was the youngest person that was ever fitted with contact lenses in San Francisco, California, Green's Eye Medical Center. Oh. So I was the guy that went into books for the youngest. Oh, wow. You get any money for that? <laughs> no, but I should go back after it. And See if it's in the Guinness yeah, book. Yeah, maybe I could do something. Let's figure it out. But anyway, yeah. Nice. That's about it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> 
when you said, okay, yeah, we'll probably be doing this, and you, you had brought this up that we, yeah. you said, you know, things like favorite Black Eyed Peas song. Oh my God, I hope that one doesn't come up because I don't know any. That one came up. Guess what? Can I pick another one? Yeah. Okay, yes. cool. So anyway, take two. Yeah. <laughs> Let's save that one for the next Sure, show. yeah, for the next show. <laughs> what band do you consider to be the Nickelback of this generation? <laughs> you want to go for it or no? I'll, I don't... I'm, I, I'm iffy. It's kind of hard to say. Let me begin by addressing this. <laughs> Personally, I don't mind them. I think some of their stuff that's made on the radio is pretty decent compared to half the crap that's out yeah. there. Funny thing is, a lot of the time when I say please post questions, Nickelback is mentioned at least four or five times per comment. They must be doing right. something right since yeah. they're like mentioned four times every time. Right. See? They are, yeah, they're very well known. I mean, I remember making a mistake for my oldest daughter. I went down to pick up a CD for her. And she actually, she's going to kill me because she's probably watching this. <laughs> but yeah, she liked Nickelback. <laughs> there you go. Another, another pun on Nickelback. Outed. I, I've owned a couple of their albums. So. But I, I had grabbed a CD called Pickin' on Nickelback. And she came out of her room about an hour later and she goes, Dad? And I go, yeah. And she goes, this isn't Nickelback. And I go, what are you talking about? Is it a bluegrass trip? Yeah, it was a bluegrass trip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you get anyway, a trip, you... We're talking something. about it, so I'm going to leave it in there. <laughs> All right, All right yeah. I'll pass this back. So... What do you got? Who do you think? I think the band that's been getting the most crap lately is Greta Van Fleet. Yeah. Because they've just been called Zeppelin blatant ripoffs, which, right. if you listen to the songs, it's easy to see why. Like, the songs are good, but I just don't see any artistic evolution from too, that group. Too obvious. I've not listened to them. I've heard yeah. all the hubbub, but it's kind of like when Gray White did that whole song with the bow on the dude. It was like, oh, yeah, you guys are trying yeah. too hard yeah. here. Yeah. As we speak, literally less than an hour ago, they just won Grammy for Best Rock Album. Yeah. So, really? The best good. part about that article is the photo that they used for the header was a photo of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> like 1971. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what they say, you know, I mean, any kind of, any way that you can get your name out there. Yeah. There's no bad way to. And they are nominated for Best New Artist, and that's usually, if they win that, that's a curse. That tends to be a curse for the Grammys. If you win Best New Artist, really? you're done after that. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you... you Glad we didn't get it. got a little <laughs> We haven't peaked yet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we got a little ways to go, I guess. Uh, or at least the bands continue, but they have nowhere near the success that they had before. Okay. Right. So a, a modern version of... A, a band that gets trashed on, I would trash. say. Lately, trash. the Super Bowl, I think Maroon 5 are yeah. some trash. Yeah. I will say the first couple of Maroon Five albums were guilty pleasures because it was it was catchy pop music, but it wasn't compromising integrity. It wasn't. Oh yeah, down. songs about Jane right. was an amazing. Yeah. I loved that album. It yeah. the shit out of it. It yeah. seems like they're they come and go with that every yeah. now and then. You know, and that, that band is the like if I if someone tells me give me a band that's sold out, definitely like I don't usually claim that for bands like. If you're signing to a major label, you want to make a living doing what you love. So right. I, don't, I don't blame you for signing to a major. But in that case, they're like completely compromising what they used to be to make money in a way that doesn't feels like it's soul crushing. Yep. So like they're that's getting the <clears throat> their front guy showed up on American Horror Story as a Catholic priest. That was like yeah. the point where it's like okay, they've they've crossed that line. Yeah. Yeah. And I distinctly remember him, Adam Levine hosting SNL once. He's trying to do the hey, I'm funny. Even though he played the straight man in every skit, <laughs> like, oh. like you're not Justin Timberlake, you can't pull off that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And so he was just. Yeah. What was one of the di SNL digital shorts that Lonely Island did where he Yolo? Like, is it Yolo where he does the chorus for it? There's yeah. There's one where oh, he comes I ran in with so far. There's he one does where, that. One where he comes in with like a chorus filled with like children at the very end for like this big swim. Oh, that's like, I ran so far. Okay. Like I ran like I R A N the cunt. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. About that Mahmood. Yeah. I'm a Dina I did, John. I'm a Dina John. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was great. But uh yeah. Maroon Five is definitely another one that lately has been getting especially crapped on because of the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like if you get put in the Super Bowl slot and uh you're not exactly fitted for that, then you're gonna get crapped on for sure. Whereas like if you're a huge larger than life artist like Beyonce or Gaga, I get why you're gonna get praise. Right. And Bruno Mars is one of the few pop stars now that actually has that natural I think it he's naturally fitted for that. Hmm. 
but you put the chili peppers on and I haven't been the biggest chili peppers fan as of late. Yeah. So I haven't liked them since Frusciante left the band. But I mean like yeah. but I remember when they did the Super Bowl. Yeah. They weren't even plugged in. No, it was all that was, was a big shot. controversy. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, socks. I just posted that. that uh, <laughs> they were the socks on the hoo ha. Hoo ha on Girl Ain't Girl. Uh, the, the Onion article that was uh, the lyrics to their newest album is just the Wikipedia page for the state of California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. What was the meme that you put up of uh, Give It Away, Give It Away Now? What was it? Uh, I've done several of those. I'm trying to remember. About, like weighing something. What was the Chili Peppers weight loss thing called? Give it away. Give it away now. <laughs> that was great. No, I would have loved to see Chili Peppers just show up at the Super Bowl halftime with just socks just on their swing. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Whoops. Oh. <laughs> And there's an interview with Anthony Kiedis talking about how he had a surgery for uh, appendectomy recently. He was talking about the scar tissue. And then someone commented, That I wish you saw. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. So okay. he, he cannot say some of those phrases anymore because I'm like... <laughs> Scar tissue. That I wish you saw. <laughs> I'm just being sarcastic. <laughs> Mr. Know It All. <laughs> Put my spleen in a jar. <laughs> he does kind of sound like that, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's pretty It's one of those, spot. like, I've been working on my Anthony Kiedis impression. It just kind of does a lot of. Let me know my. Hey! Ho oh, ho! Oh. Yeah! Ho oh, ho! Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Dungeon Master. <laughs> D&D album. But you're right, Frusciante as a guitarist is incredible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not being facetious. Here. Just have Frusciante and Kias do an acoustic show. <laughs> yeah. See, I like Frusciante and I like Flea. And Chad Smith's pretty good as a drummer, but Kias just never... Never blew me away. Never was like, oh, he's so good. Right. It's just like, he's a decent rapper. But it... This, it was that time and place. It fit. Yep. Um, like, but that's yep. me. <laughs> Should we move on to the next question? Well, yes, sure. sure. Nice. All right. Okay. By the way, you ran out of Coke in the green room. All right. Oh, my bad. Yeah. The drinky or the the drinky or the snorty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you get nervous before performances? Yes or no? Sure. I'll talk about right. it. Okay. Depends on Sexually, the show. no. <laughs> <laughs> Both for me. Uh, <laughs> but it really depends on the venue and where I'm at. It's like, I imagine for you guys, Friday, was that nerve wracking at, at Tyson? Just another no, show? No, or? You know, a couple it was beers it. and a shot of whiskey cured it all. Yeah. And then you get the first two notes down, everybody, we all look at each other. Well, and you know. We're just you, playing music. Yeah. You hear that whatever you know everybody says well you can't see past the first five rows or whatever now that night you couldn't yeah. because of the way the downstage truss was it was all white light yeah. and you really couldn't see much past the first five rows now if you yeah. looked up you could see people up and up or way up there you know yeah. the suites yeah. or the seats or whatever so it was really cool but my wife and i talk about this a lot and um i don't and it's a bummer in a way um and I think it's because a lot of the stage crew work that I've done and everything else. Um, you just get to that point where you realize that this is a, this is a job. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, you don't have to look at it as a job all the time. You can really enjoy this job, but the nerve part of it is gone. Yeah. yeah and I kind of miss that no, a sure. little bit. Yeah. You know, I remember back when I first started. Yeah. And yeah, you'd get anxious on a bigger show or whatever, but I mean, you know. Done. I'll go on a bike rally in front of six thousand people, and I don't know. We were between two and three thousand, you know, the other night. And I mean, yeah, no different, really. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, the, the the only time that I feel awkward is sometimes when we're in an exceptionally small, small venue, mm -hmm. like when we play at Botsky's and we're shoved right in that corner, and the oh, people sure. are walking by, going to the bathroom the whole time when we're playing. 
that's an awkward feeling, not a nervous feeling. It's just sure. like, God, I feel like I'm in the way. We're in the way, you know. Yeah. We're in the but, way, we're in the way, we're in the way. Yeah. <laughs> in the way, in the way, in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it too, you know, to con- convert that nervous energy into performance energy. Yeah, yeah. you know, that that brings out a lot. You'll you'll be like, did I just do that on stage? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. yeah. It's just it's. I get more nervous about doing a brand new small venue. Oh, it's sure. not like stage fright. It's just like, all right, if this turns out, we got because what half of our stuff is, like Friday night. And car shows and opening other opening stuff yeah. and the other stuff three we're doing bars clubs yeah. what have you yeah. Yeah. and when we do a new venue I want it to go well so I worry a little bit sure not yeah. hardcore <laughs> oh my god oh my god but it's just I want it to go well I want it to go well I want right. to dig yeah. it but yeah the other night just to get up like you said okay let's go yeah. and uh, you get up there and alright you, you just like you say you kick into it and boom it's there and it's fun and Yep. You look out and you'll see a few faces going. You know, they're looking at the base and they're looking at Steve and they're like, what spaceship do these guys just fly in on? Because we look so different than what what modern music is about. I mean, we are modern, we, we, we stay up, but you'll look out and you'll see these faces and all of a sudden pretty soon when you start playing, they go from stairs to like, yep. this is pretty cool. Yeah. And then it just goes in waves, and pretty soon you got people dancing and doing all kinds of crazy stuff out there, and that brings energy back to you, and you bring that energy back to them. Right, and, right. That is cool. Yeah. So, music, and it, it yeah. usually catches pretty quick. I mean, that was, you know, I don't know if, if Sioux City knew what they were in store for as far as for an opening act. They might have expected another, you know, 80s rock band or whatever. Um, you know, but the reality of it is, yeah, right after that first song, I mean, we had we had the crowd. Yeah. You know, they were cheering, they were into it, they were moving the whole time, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it's cool. It's We do something a little bit different with this band than, than you know, I think what any of us had done before, really. You know, you were more more of a modern rock band back in the day. and Back, back in the day when it was, now it's not modern anymore. Yeah, and I yeah. played <laughs> hard rock and metal and played in a variety band where I played everything and, you know, well, surf music with a drum machine. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, what we're doing is kind of it's it, it's different for a lot of people, and I think it's refreshing too. Yeah. You know, we mixed it up pretty good and, and do. A, we know going into a show that we're going to do, you know, we've got two CDs out, so we've got a lot of original material as well as a lot of really cool covers. I think that match what genre we're doing. Right. You know, yeah. so. People seem to enjoy our satirical side when we started playing. Uh, porn star prom date that place just lit up and went ape shit crazy yep. yeah um and i could hear people <laughs> laughing out there and it was just like they were like what is this this is fun yeah yeah, yeah. You know, so the sat- satirical side you know like daddy love you with his belt and <laughs> that's like true stories tied into that was robert if you heard that song oh yeah oh yeah i love it <laughs> with my belt uh, with my, my favorite is just the belt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love what about it. you? Yeah. Uh, music, not really, because it's just playing. You're not really relying on a crowd. You're just playing your songs and enjoying yourself. And it's one of those things that if they react well, great. Right. If not, it's fine too. Yeah. I'm fine either way. Stand up, I rely on that that crowd. And if I'm getting nothing, I'm gonna stress a little bit. I'm gonna yep. react. And lately, I've been finding new ways to not get nervous on stage by doing little things as soon as I hop up there. I just yell a lot, and that works great, because that way I've already broken the tension. Right, I'm already right. They, they can tell I'm fully confident, like, oh, he's yelling, he's got it, he's confident, he's not worried. Like, he's not afraid to be up there. Yep. And that helps me a ton. Last night at Bosses, I just walked up there and I start yelling, how are you? I yelled it like 12 times, and I pause and go, this is my whole set. How are you? <laughs> like, <laughs> like my voice was cracking and all this stuff, and so I, I, that's my kind of my way to shake the nerves. Just right, right. Yell a lot, be energetic, and then I, I just go right in my set, and then it's fine. And I would imagine, you know, when you're doing stand up, or even for like a lead vocalist, I would, I would, I mean, I get up every now and then with my wife and Maya's band, right? Yeah, and I'll do a couple of songs where I'm singing with her. Mm-hmm. 
And I'll tell you, you know, being a drummer, then you get up and you're in a lead vocalist position. I don't know what the hell to do. I'm fine when I'm singing. I can stand on the monitor. I can play around with the crowd. But it's when I'm not singing and the music is playing and I'm waiting to come back in with the next verse. I don't know what the hell to do. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it's just awkward as hell. So, I mean, I suppose... You and I a sock on. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I always look at it as I'm assuming that, you know, thank God, you know, I mean, yeah. like for him, he's got a guitar. He's playing a guitar as well as singing lead vocals. Right, yeah. But if you're out there just doing lead vocals or doing stand up or there's breaks when you're not singing, it's kind of like, what do you do? It's like, what do you do? You yeah. know? I always like to just study from it and how they go about doing things between vocal breaks. And just, I think it's fun to just do idiotic dance moves. And sometimes that's just fun to do. Just like, yeah, or run around like, stage, you know, and, and kind of play with these. Yeah. You yeah. see some of them, I've watched a few videos, it's really funny, you know, where you're looking at live shows and you watch, like, the, the guy disappears and then he comes back out and he's got his bottle of water and he sets it down. Yeah. Or do what Mike beer. Patton did with Faith No More on SNL. He climbed up the rail on the stage yeah during a long break up the truss yeah and just like lays down on the <laughs> and then goes back down just in time for the next vocal cue i'm like damn mike patton mike patton there's a reason why you're the one of the best front man yeah i know <laughs> exactly that's what i was just gonna say i'm like he's got it you know he'll do things that nobody else does so yeah whatever yeah i've always wanted to be a front man but i never have just because i'm always behind the kids so i can never really but I've always, yeah, me too yeah but since like doing stand-up I know how to kind of get the crowd going so like like with banter my band struggles with banter that's why I'm like just give me the mic between songs I'll tell you shit yeah. like <laughs> yeah yeah you can do comedy from behind the drums yeah yeah I've done it occasionally there you go with the bands changing guitars I'll tell a joke and then go but and then we go to the next song nice. there you go I think chops is probably one of the greater frontmen we work with a lot of bands, and there's a band that stands out as far as frontmen go. I, I think Crank Daddies, uh, their guy Chops Quintana, he's got a way of telling a story and bringing the crowd into that, and mm -hmm. then just playing rock your ass off, you yeah. know, and back and forth, and just no BS about it. Does he still owe you money? I think he owes me like five bucks. Chops, you, you got my five? <laughs> Are you watching? Because I'd like the crap out of it if you gave me my five back. <laughs> By the way, did you ever make that jump on that bicycle over the, uh, what was that, the sewer pit, the sludge pit? Springfield Gorge? I think so. <laughs> was it Gorge full of food? Because that's what he was going to jump. But anyways, no, I love you, Chops. Don't that's one of my favorite Simpsons episodes at Homer just eats <laughs> shit. <laughs> just all the way down. Right? I'm just, ah, ooh, to, ah, ooh, yeah, all the way down. Ambulance crashes, rolls yeah. on the back, does it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Or, or a family guy. Uh, this is about as weird as the time I saw Bobby McFerrin fall down the stairs. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> One of the dumbest bits I've ever seen. It was great, great though. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm not one of those. If I did do banter between songs it'd be more of the awkward how are you and just tell a random stupid thing and then move on i'm not a big storyteller so whenever we, we do storytelling showcases for comedy every once in a while where it's like it's a themed story like they give you a title like it was meant to be or something you have to figure out a story based on that title and something like that and yep. i just i i'm as far as storytelling goes i have four sentences and then i call it good like i was hungry i had food then i ate it then i felt great that's the story. <laughs> like, but there's a lot of comics that are just so good at like really? interspersing a joke in between every couple sentences. Right. Like, I'm just not a storytelling comedian, more of a one-liner, stupid little vignette kind of comic. So I'm always worried about you gotta if you if you don't tell a joke in like 30 seconds, you're losing them. It's like, don't lose them. Yeah. That's the that's my internal process. That's why I don't tell stories unless I've like fully fleshed it out. Like, oh, is this a funny? Okay. It's not don't. <laughs> no, I, I think with regard to the whole nervousness thing, yeah. I mean, I would I would be way more nervous trying to do comedy or yeah. whatever. I think you guys are awesome. Oh, thanks. You know, for taking that chance to get up there and do it. Because, you know, when we're doing music, you know, like you said, you do yeah. music too. So, I mean, you just yeah. go up there and if they don't like it, well, you move on to the right. next. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, yeah, when you're out there by yourself and 
if it doesn't work, it, it's really hard to get them back. I'm sure. Yeah, you know? it's super fun now to do mu- host music fests and do comedy in between. Yeah, so I did that Friday with Ken's birthday thing, which was super fun. And it was kind of just like you get the crowd warmed up a little bit. It's fun to because most of those crowds are rowdy and they're ready to right, have fun right. anyway. So it's an easy crowd to be like, "Are you guys ready?" And then I give them a, the musician a nice little intro, and then it's just fun. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it's a good time. But uh, the first couple of music fests I hosted, I wasn't fully confident doing that yet. So I was just kind of like, "This next person's a guy." Uh, <laughs> yeah, give it up for him there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah, hey. People are like, yeah, what that do guy do? there, don't you know? That guy there, he's in that band. Yeah, you he, all, you've all seen, you, you've seen him, right? <laughs> right? You've seen him at Boot Town. Boot Town? <laughs> you see him or no? Yeah. <laughs> he jumped to Springfield Gorge that time. Yeah. Was he on a Schwinn? Was it a Schwinn? <laughs> he rode a Schwinn, like. <laughs> <laughs> the Schwann's delivery truck? What the? <laughs> what? The Schwann's man, too? <laughs> Fun fact, I once backed into a Schwann's delivery truck, nice. <laughs> and uh, that was, I was 18, I had just kind of started driving, and I was stressed out to the max, and the guy driving, I was a total dick about it. He's just like, well, I better call my boss and see what he says. You probably but, didn't even hurt the truck. No, like, no dent, nothing, but he was just being a dick about it. <laughs> like, and then he was like, I guess we'll be all right. He like, didn't sell enough know. ice cream that day. No. Yeah. yeah. Sandwiches were. Did he try to get you to buy anything to no. make it go? No. I heard you know, they I don't let them go home teenager. until they sold their quota for the day. Yeah. <laughs> he saw me as a stressed out teenager, so he's like, I'm mess with this kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it was during a, a, Christmas, a New Year's Eve party, so I was having fun. With my, I was going on my way to have fun with my friends, and I backed into that truck. And I got uh, downstairs and had fun with them. I'm just like, What time of the day was this? It's like 5 p.m. All right, they're still out. Yeah. Well, it was, we were all 17, 18, so the parents were there, so it wasn't a drinking party. So it was a sober high school thing. So, oh, yeah. Twister. Those are the worst. Pizza and yeah. soda. And Pizza and soda yeah. and uh, stuff. Movies. Jonah Hill films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we were allowed to watch with parental supervision. <laughs> I, super bad, but you gotta mute out the F bombs. Gotta mute them out. <laughs> I imagine every parent talks like that. Like, oh, you gotta stop that here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. All right, yeah moving right along. Right <laughs> you gotta stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. I do that when I'm nervous. <laughs> no spiders this time. <laughs> <laughs> Read it in a Midwestern accent. <laughs> we don't have an accent. Our form of English is actually quite pure. Quite New English. <laughs> Albums ahead of their time. Sorry, that's my theatrics. That's good. Mm-hmm. Albums ahead of their time. Albums ahead of their time. The Cars, 1979. Rush, 2112. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. say so. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people <laughs> don't like Rush, but... Yeah. Well, I love Rush. Yeah. yeah. I was making a Rush, a Christian rock parody this morning. <laughs> Modern day savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would be easy to do, though, with him, wouldn't it? Would, yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's a tough definition. Ahead of their time. Or just something that blows <laughs> oh, you away. Crucifixes. In the high school halls. <laughs> in the shopping halls. <laughs> Crucifixes. Can form or be cast out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cast out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brush. man. That's good. I like it. Crucifixes. <laughs> we gotta get together on this. Oh, I gotta. Because... I gotta. That's my next stand up set. <laughs> Note to self. You guys are my muse this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, he's actually taking the note. He's like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. let's go into the next set. My oh, other bit. A, I, I like that. Was a, that uh, Cars album hit you. It stood out. Yeah, yeah. Which Cars like album? Huge. The first, first one? one. Yeah, oh, yeah that was fantastic. I remember just watching TV, watching TV, like Don Kirshner's Rock, whatever it was at night. Yep, Don and, Kirshner's Rock. Concert. And then seeing the Cars, and I'm like, what is this? Like Elvis kind of sound stuff, and then there's synthesizers, and this is all way cool. Yeah, 
And then they showed up on that TV show Fridays, and I'm like, I was I was hooked on those guys for life. Yep. I mean, they were just way different than anybody at the time, but it was effective enough that you could tell that a lot of that new wave stuff from the 80s built off of that. Yeah, but, with the cars, the f- funny opinion about that one is a lot of people, like, don't say it, but they prefer Ben Orr's songs as opposed to Rick Ocasek's songs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like, I like Ben Orr's voice better. Oh, than Rick yeah. Rick has more of a unique, distinct voice, but Ben Orr got the better songs, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. I would agree. It's like yeah. just like if you look at Ben Orr's songs, like "Just What I Needed," "Drive," "Yep," "Let's Go," like his his is just yeah classic after classic. Where Rick's are more of the quirky, like you get to go doing <laughs> something bad, like that whole like yep. <laughs> go go. <ahead. laughs> <laughs> Boston, yeah. don't look back. I Which think one? Boston, don't oh, look yeah. back. Yeah. I, I've always meant to dive into more Boston stuff besides just the 1976 album. Yeah. But I never have. I have Don't Look Back in Third Stage, but I just never really sat down and listened to them. The yep. Amanda was a big hit, and yeah. Yep. Take other. Man, I'm thinking I can't. I got nothing. So there's a lot of albums by famous bands where there's the album that got overlooked because it was a little ahead of its time. They were expecting something else from the group. Right, right. But then it wasn't quite what they expected. But then 10 years later, they're like, oh, never mind. It was a good album. It was pretty good. Yep. Where would where would um, the first Van Halen album fall in that category? The first Van Halen album. With the, the I think, yeah, no, thing. I think you're right. I wouldn't say ahead of its time. It, it was kind of the start of that party rock. Yeah, because it was just different enough. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah not... Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'd say Fair Warning was more ahead of its time. Because Fair Warning is the Van Halen album that Roth era that didn't get a lot of love. Yeah. Because there wasn't really a hit on it besides Unchained. Right. So it's kind of like the rest of that album was really dark, and they didn't expect that for a Roth album. Yep. It's kind of like, is it Diver Down one? I think I always kind of enjoyed that one. It was yeah. A little, a little weird. I, that one's probably my least favorite of the six because it's mainly just a lot of covers. That's yeah. It's kind of like right. more of the originals. But even when they do covers, it's still fantastic. But I love Little Guitars. That song is so good. <laughs> like, that's oh, my yeah. favorite Van Halen song, actually. It's just so yep. catchy. I can't think of anything I consider ahead of its time. I can think of interesting and different. I'd say Queensryche, to some degree. Yeah. Operation Mindcrime, when that came out, that was a little different. Like, conceptual operatic rock albums were not popular. (laughs) Right, right. They still aren't necessarily huge, but that one set the tone for a lot of bands to start doing, like, Dream Theater. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Let's say that one. Never mind the Bullocks. I guess I could say that kind of set the template for London Calling, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that one was a little more thought out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of the early police records, too, were kind of talking heads as well. But early tubes? Yeah. I could say that, yeah. Before the 80s sellout, make more money yeah. tubes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the early stuff was really quite, quite unusual. Europe, Final Countdown. I, I heard that's, that's, that's all going through our heads right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I heard another Europe song, and I'm like, funny is I love that album now because that whole album is used in the movie Hot Rod. <laughs> yeah, as the whole soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but they like made an effort, like we want that whole <coughs> album on the soundtrack except for Final Countdown because that one's been played to death. Right. We want exactly. every other song on that album. And I thought that was a brilliant move because during montages there's like danger on the track. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's like you choose the you just completely throw away the most popular song on it and just do the deep cuts. <laughs> well yeah, I mean some of it's just been done to the point where, you know, it, there is no good placement for it anymore. No. Know? And it's not the band's fault by any means. I mean, obviously it was a great song, yeah. but yeah, it's just kind of like our media, you know. Yeah, a lot of the art, a lot of artists release that one album that's a little off the beaten path, and everyone's like, "What the hell was that like?" Right. Like in through the outdoor. Is that yep. one. That one's kind of the different. Right. 
the synthesized heavy. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with the Postal Service with Give Up, because mostly because that's the first... I'm cheating and looking at the Reddit for the most uh, ahead-of-their-time albums of oh, all sure. time. And that's the first album after scrolling through like six pages that I recognize. So. Oh, sure. Really? Yeah. I guess I could see that, because that was before a lot of indie synth It kind of created the started. indie synth pop thing. Yeah. You know, like, they were the first... To do then, to combine sad emo music with synth pop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I can see. Yes. Because I like a lot of Death Cab stuff, even though I can't I can't listen to a lot of it for a long period of time because I, I get sleepy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I love the songwriting, but uh, you can only it's kind of like Neil Young for me. It can only take so much. Yep. Like that first ten minutes of the solo on Cinnamon Girl. I know you're. Saying yeah. <laughs> what is that? An E? Yeah. There's one time, one night I was That's at some Canadian tuning. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was one that, I was at Tommy <laughs> Jack's one night. I'm like, I'm gonna bum the shit out of this crowd here, and I started playing "Old Man" by Neil Young. <laughs> oh, old man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. Oh, I think no. I was like, all the songs on the key were mine. I had Huey Lewis's "Power of Love" and then "Old oh, Man" God. right after oh, that. Man. Someone messed up my flow by putting a stupid mumble rap song on, but then. <laughs> Like, Huey Lewis and Neil Young would have been perfect. Like, and I still jam to Huey Lewis because those songs are catchy as hell. You got him in my car right now. Yeah, good. Yep. His early bow, stuff bow. is really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. You toured with him a little bit, Steve. No, we just we opened for him once. Oh, oh nice. Oh, okay. Down in a some place in Nebraska. Seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. New album this year, apparently. Really? If he gets his hearing figured out, because he had a hearing issue. <laughs> like he lost his hearing and he's getting Ooh. it back working on it or something but it's like a really rare ear condition where you're really nice dude yeah yeah I've, I've always seen like interviews he always seems so down to earth because i watched i was i had some time on my hands and i watched the behind the music huey lewis and uh he he was always just like we were never expected a thing we just wrote songs and hoped for the best that's how they yeah well, that's how they went about stuff it was fun yeah. it was uh their first album i don't even know if i have it is it four? No. No, that's a they're, first they're, they're, on there. A, they're on a beach holding a surfboard. Hola, a la, a la, hola. <laughs> Como estas? <laughs> Is it self titled uh, I can't remember. I might have it still, but they're they're carrying a surfboard. And the coolest track, we used to cover this back when I was in Fast Eddie in, in uh, college. It was called Sooner or Later. Oh. Great harmonies, cool guitar parts. And the only reason, only reason, <laughs> reason, reasoner, reasoner. <laughs> That's my Baba Wawa impression. Baba Wawa. <laughs> um, there used to be this show, this is like 80, 81, and it was on one of the off channels. And it was called Pop Clips. Okay. Directed by some guy named Mike Nesmith. I don't know. What a monkey. Yeah. It would be a monkey. Oh, that guy. That guy. So and they would show he he was he created this show because it was an early avenue for videos. Oh sure, yeah. Before MTV, so and there was this thing by Huey Lewis. When you say I love you, uh -uh, uh -uh. it was just cool. <laughs> so that's, that's, look it up sooner or later yeah. by Huey Lewis on the news. So that was the first album, and then picture this had Do You Believe in Love that kind of took off, and then Sports which blew the hell up, and yeah. then four, and, four. and then. Strange World or something like that, which didn't take off, and then that's when he's like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> like, I'll tour with the I'll news, but I don't need to write new stuff. <laughs> right. Like, he was totally content. Like, we rode high for two albums, we're good. <laughs> Tired to watch. <laughs> I used to be able to do that 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Love it. <laughs> was that a Dan Electro? Like, that was a guy? So, That's cool. It was on the. On the. <laughs> 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 I 
never seen you guys play this song <laughs> way back. Probably down in Vermilion, man. Very possible. That's, that's amazing. That's a good song. It was a good song. As soon as that so hit that. So, Huey, you can thank me for that extra three cents. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is Spotify. That's point oh three. Yeah, that's that's a that's a money maker. You feel like a nickel yet? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? My buddies over in Iowa, the surf zombies. He'll he'll post a picture of his check from Spotify every once in a while. I'll be like four cents. It's like, <laughs> it's like the paper. The paper costs more than that. <laughs> it's tough to make a buck out there. Yeah. <laughs> Let alone a nickel. <laughs> Should we do the next question? Okay, sure. Can we think, can we think of any other ones? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Crucifixes. Right. In the high school halls. <laughs> there you go. Crucifixes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Black Eyed Peas one? <laughs> if you could be any animal at the zoo, what would it be and why? Oh, Jeez. yeah. Is this like freshman orientation? I'm going to fail my own question. <laughs> like, I'm going to say no to that. I don't know how to fail that one. <laughs> we got to fail one of these. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll fail it because I was going to get uh. monkeys because they can spank it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, what else? What else? We don't even have yeah. to skip it. He just like. The perfect answer that's, to that question. That's good. Yeah. When I was a little what kid, man, my mom. You know, took I me wonder to how many times when a and parent has their children at the zoo, <laughs> they come monkey. up on that. Right. I wonder <laughs> how many times that, that actually a thousand like, miles prompts an hour the birds and the bees. You know, <laughs> what's he doing, mommy? Hmm. Well, let's go <laughs> get an ice cream and sit down at the table, hon. <laughs> It's think, time for that talk. <laughs> so, do you think there's like any parents that like, <laughs> like that bad, parents right? decide to legally change the name of their kid because the kid's known for like masturbating a lot and changed their name to Peter Gabriel? <laughs> well, he really spanks the monkey a lot. So, I mean, Spank the monkey. Anytime I walk in, he's just like, oh, <laughs> like shock the monkey. <laughs> oh, oh my All God. right, my mom just. What makes a great parody satire artist, Weird Al, Lonely Island, etc.? I'll talk. About sure. It, but I'm biased. But I was going to say, I, <coughs> Zach might have submitted that one. I wrote that one. Oh, okay. Well, I'm then, biased. We'll take it. We'll take it. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, syncopation with the original song, making it funny. Yep. Like, I try to, like, I get a lot of that inspiration from Weird Al with, like, the crucifixes thing. For example, yep. like, I just think, okay, how many beats does that word have matched right. with the original? And then that's how I do a lot of, I do, like, 90s grunge Christmas stuff on stage and stuff like that. It's just super fun. Because that way I can do those impressions but have my own spin on it. So yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. And Weird Al kind of does the best of both worlds. He'll do, like, half the album is originals that he just writes in the style of an artist. Mm -hmm. And then the other half is literally just changing the lyrics and right, yeah. finding a, you know, something to make sense out of it. I guess yeah. that would be the main thing. I, you know, I grew up. Again, we're showing our age a little bit, but yeah, I mean, like you know, I grew up with the old AM radios, and yeah. so like, at the time that I was in my my teens or my early twenties, and you know, we had the internet thing. Yeah. You know, that, that finally came out as we got a little bit older or whatever. Um, we were able to see, holy shit, we can hear this stuff better. And now I can actually look up what the lyrics are without having to buy the, the album right. or whatever. Yeah. And I was amazed because I'll tell you, a lot of these songs that we still hear today from way back in, you know, mid-70s yeah. or whatever, I didn't know that's what they were talking about. Yeah. But then I got to the point where if I didn't know what they were talking or if I couldn't make it out or whatever, yeah. I would just make up whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, but it had to follow a storyline for me. It had to make sense, right? It had to be funny. And so I think that's it, too. You know, A, it's got to match, like you said, syncopation. And then uh, it has to make some sort of sense, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't have to be serious by any means. You don't want it to. Yeah. You my, want it to be funny. My favorite is not getting the lyrics until way later. Then you listen to it, and you're like, oh, that's what that was about. <laughs> yeah. <Shit>. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, with Weird Al's uh, Crash Test Dummies parody. Mm -hmm. When he does the whole John Wayne Bob or Wayne Bobbitt thing, like <laughs> she cut off his wiener. I knew I got that, but then I totally forgot the last part. Like he finally came to, he couldn't quite explain it. It had always just been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just lifted like. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, he was on uh, Dr. Oz the other day. Really? John Wayne, Bob? Yeah, talking uh, about the whole situation. You know, anybody ever see uh, his porno? No. <laughs> Oh, no, but God. he did make it. Uh, neither have I, but I heard it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> Is oh. it a short one? Oh, Conan, oh. Conan oh. O'Brien uh, did a great bit in the 90s when that happened. Andy Richter was on, <laughs> on the stand playing a, a, a witness. He goes, well, I was working in the field and I felt something hit me. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what do you think it could have been? That could have been an orange or a chicken breast or something. <laughs> Like, did you feel the right? Did you feel any pain? Not, not physical pain. <laughs> wow. Uh, vintage counting. God, what was the name of that movie? I'm gonna say it was Frank and Weenie. Because they reattached it. Right, right. Not, not the Tim Burton one, but no. <laughs> well, <laughs> good, good, good clarification. Yeah. The PG one versus the uh, right. Yeah. NC17. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, whatever you said about satire and parody, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Know? Everybody just crossed their legs at once. Well, yeah. 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 Me, I got the junket. <laughs> you got the junket. <laughs> you got the junket on your junket. But I feel like there's not a lot of satire that lasts a long time. It's got a short shelf life a lot of the yeah. time. At least in the day and age of YouTube, it's like, yeah. oh, that's, well, that, that was funny, then I forget about it two minutes later. Right. You have to be current yeah. with it. Yeah. I always like Weird Al. Although Weird Al does stand the test of time. I mean, he's the one that I can think back, you know, of stuff that I first, when he first came out, that I heard. I'm like, wow. Well, yeah, yeah listening to Dr. Me- Dr. Demento and uh, My Bologna. Yeah. He and They Might Be Giants are the closest I can think of that actually withstand the test of time. Like, they actually still, it works. Yep. Relevant, yeah. Yeah. The best part about They Might Be Giants, I saw them last year for the first time, and they played like 45 songs in like an hour and a half. <laughs> like Whoa. a lot of them are short, yeah. but it's yeah. still like they play two different sets each night, and like they played a surf rock. Like I love how different all the genres they explore. They played a surf rock kind of spy song called Spy, and at the end they're like trying to like. Uh, oops. Oops. oops, it's fine. Hey, I'm glad yeah. you did it because I've done it about three yeah. times. <laughs> You break it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> like John, the, the singer, is like directing when they keep playing, just go crazy, and then he just stops, keep it going. They just drag it out for like five minutes. He like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like how they explore different genres. It's fun. Yeah. So it, it really depends on the content of the song. If it's yeah. about like Trump, it's going to be dated in a couple of years. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, right. That's why I mean, we get to play around with stuff like that too. Steve always keeps us on our toes. We don't know sometimes what the hell's going to happen. <laughs> but like, I remember a show, like for instance, we were in, uh, oh my God, we were at the back 40 out there in Mitchell. And oh, we God. started doing like Flock of Seagulls. And oh. I mean, we're a rockabilly band, you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're doing Flock of Seagulls. And, but I mean, we were doing it, you know? And it was people were like, what in the hell? Yeah. And we're laughing at it more the end of than. The night. I was drunk out there. <laughs> we were having more fun with it probably than they were. You know, they were just like, whoa, where'd that come from? And we're like, holy shit, what the hell are we doing? You know? <laughs> And we did it well, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, our band, we have riffs that Bobby comes up with. We just kind of mess with in between yep. songs. We never played it live, but one of the riffs that Bobby came up with rips off Symphony of Destruction by Megan Just really? like, I do a Tom thing, like, do 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 And then Bobby pauses and goes, meet me at the fucking hole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then we'll chime in with, take a mortal man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's fun for us. <laughs> like, and if no one else gets it, we'll be like playing it on stage. And like everyone's like, what are it's you doing? It's got to be fun. Yeah. yeah. That's you're the whole thing. you got to have fun for that regardless of what you're doing. You we know? will play that for sound checks, though, occasionally. Like, people don't, it's not a song, it's just our little. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Next. Next yeah. one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Is that what cemetery you putting your hand in that thing? I don't know. After years has been in it and his has been in it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to take pictures while we're doing this? Oh, oh, please do. Oh, I didn't Name an album that you were looking forward to 
but just didn't live up to your expectations. Yes. I'll talk about that. Yeah. 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 All right. You start, though. I'll start. We'll start with you. Oi. And work our way around again. Oh, that's, that's a good question. It oh, yeah. seemed like such a good idea just a moment ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are. I, I wanted to think um, about it, though, too. Green Day, 21st Century Breakdown. The yeah, album after American one. Idiot, because it was basically American Idiot felt like American Idiot B sides. Yeah. To me. But <laughs> how, how the hell do you follow that one? True. Though, as big as the, the legendary one as that album is. Yeah. Like, yeah. I fucking like completely conquered the last three years yeah. of my college career where it was, like, every bar like yeah. on loop continuously is like yeah. how the hell do you top that? It's like if you in this day and age, it's rare when a band sells six million copies of an album, they did it. And it's like you gotta follow that up. It's like, right, right. It's not gonna be as good. It'll be. I'll be. I was complacent. I liked the album, but it was nowhere near. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, really. Okay. It had some good singles on it. That yeah. I really liked. <coughs> but no, it was not no. near as good. And it was bloatedly long too. It was yeah. Like Eighteen tracks. Very indulgent. So, yeah. I was just like, like, what do you got? Oh, it's like that last Boston album you know because you kind of expect it to be like the first two but then 20 years later you're like this should be outstanding because they had a little time to to go in and it was kind of like they took tracks it felt to me like they took tracks off the second album that they didn't use or the first album and just kind of buffered them into this third album and i know it was all original music on the third one but yeah it's like guys we waited a long time a long time Yep. It's been a long time. It's been a while. And, and <laughs> we got a third album from Boston, and that's kind of like I listened to it once, and it went into my pile of yep. stuff. I got, I got three. Oh, nice. I got three. All right. Part of my dark and sordid past, I used to be a huge Kiss fan. Oh, <laughs> back when they were cool. Yeah. Yeah. No way in hell I'm going to that show next month. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, first album. This is cool. Second, this is cool. Third album, this is cool. I mean, what we had the Kiss was Kiss, and we had what? Hotter and Hell and Dress to Kill. Yeah. Then we had Alive. And you know, when you're a high school kid in a small town, that's like, yeah. oh, this is so cool. Yeah. And then came that piece of crap Destroyer. Oh, I did not like that album. You like Destroyer. I did not oh. like to, It's like, all right, now you got some fancy producer and you lost your edge. Oh. You're not this interesting yeah. band that's not like anybody else. And I just like, no, we've got orchestras and Beth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay. See, I did like God of Thunder, though. Yeah. I like that song. And as cheesy as it is, I like the song, Do You Love Me? <laughs> you really are. Uh, wow. <laughs> what? I mean, like, do you? <laughs> All right, here's my other one. I, in the same dark times, I used to, I used to like Rush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Early albums. Same oh, yeah. thing, you know. And you had 21, stuff, yeah. 12, and and uh, then you had this thing called uh, Hemispheres. No. If you're thinking of the one, Fare, Farewell to Kings. Oh. Oh, okay. With, like, I was okay with and, that one. I didn't like that one. It was like again, I thought you guys are getting kind of. On the Rush thing, Smart though, yeah. the one that got me, and, and I got that uh, that gray album, it was the first three, or whatever, it had Rush, Rush, um, Fly By Night, then, which uh, I love, yeah, and yeah, Caressive Steel. Steel. Yeah. That one, I think, is probably, and they would probably agree, and I think they've even made comment about it, you know, as Rush transitioned through for 40 years. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of their stuff, and I'm a huge Neil fan, and I, I have mad respect for both oh, the yeah. other guys, too. I mean, Alex is phenomenal. Yeah. Getty is just, I don't know where he comes from. It's witchcraft. Canada. Canada. Something weird. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but no, I, uh, you know, a lot of them, when I would get the album, I would listen to it, and I'd be like, huh. And then it was like the fourth or fifth time, and then I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Caress of Steel... I think I, I still have it on vinyl, and I don't think I've listened to it more than twice. I would say Crest of Steel, too, because that one just didn't quite... I don't with know Rush, what... I like the progressiveness, but the pop sensibility thrown into. Right. That's what I like about Rush. And that's Crest of Steel had the good riffs, but it didn't quite have enough 
to land me. So. Yeah, and I don't know if, if Neil had, had matured to a point where, you know, because he took over when he joined the band after the first album. Yeah. I mean, he, he writes 95% of their lyrics. Yeah. And I don't know if after, you know, Fly By Night, I don't know if maybe he was just getting too philosophical. He might have tried to evolve it further. Yeah, and then they're like, okay, then what they were ready back. for at that yeah. point. Because if you, if you go further, you know, into their other albums, yeah, then yeah. all of his really deep stuff made, you know, a lot of sense or whatever. Yeah. But I see. For me, I the first Rush records I listened to were Permanent Waves and Moving Pictures. So yeah, it was kind of a. Then I went back, and. And then for years I never knew that, like as just hearing radio, I never knew Fly By Night was a Rush track. I kept hearing it on like 102.7 all the time. Yeah. That fits in well with all that 70s rock, that kind of, because that was the most uh, pop sensible early Rush track. Right, right. Besides like Working Man, but that was more, yeah. it felt like a Zeppelin track at that point. But <laughs> There's a young guy that comes into Guitar Center all the time and, and he just blows me away. The kid, I don't even know what his name is. I mean, I talk to him all the time, but... Um, crazy, crazy good. And I mean, he's into those Canadian rockers, you know. And first time he came in, he was pay playing some uh, paper wine, and I'm like, wow, oh, wow, you're nailing it. You know, like I've never heard anybody my age nail it, and yeah. you're nailing it, and you're, I don't know what he is, 20, early 20s for sure. That's cool. Um, at the most. And uh, so I turned him on to like Pat Travers and stuff like that, and I said, yeah, check this guy out. Well, he came in yesterday and he was playing like In the Mood by Rush and, oh, nice. and you know, a lot of the early, early like blues rock influence yeah. stuff. And I'm like, wow, dude. And he's just nailing it. Yeah. And then I was busy, but he had come in before he left and he goes, hey, did you hear me playing some Rush? And I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more time to talk to him because I would have liked to sat down on the electronic kit and played along with him. Right. Yeah. You know, but. I mean, I can't do all of it. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm Neil because I'm not. And never will be. Oh, me but, either. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I learned a lot from Neil over the years, for sure. Yeah. You know. I did think it was interesting when he switched from regular to traditional grip about halfway through his career. I've just like I've tried traditional. The only time I've done traditional grip, which is like you basically have to like weird with yeah. marching band when you were forced to. Right. That was the only time <laughs> I've in drumline. And yeah. And that I just can't do it. I'm just used to. There's a grip joke in there somewhere. <laughs> I was used to traditional grip playing with myself. And but, then, uh, uh, you know, then I went to the alternative To the reverse grip. standard. I was doing this, and, like, I wasn't getting any traction. Just <laughs> <laughs> so, like... <laughs> oh, oh, man. Mm, yeah. My dad's listening. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Your dad's probably like... <laughs> like, Lee McFarland, he started it. <laughs> Why don't you cover dicks? Let's cover boogers and boop, and we'll have the night. Oh, there you go. We didn't talk about boobs. Right. But no, I can't. I mean, those are kind of, yeah, a lot of them that. Oh, there are a couple Foo Fighters albums that disappointed me. Yeah. Because the, the singles were good, but the rest of the album was just not interesting. Sonic yeah. Highways, uh, the newest one, it has a couple really good songs. The singles are really good, but the rest of the album was just blah. <laughs> Guns and Roses Live. Everything since Appetite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guns and Roses pretty much for me. Yeah, yeah. not a fan. Yeah, this is where I slam my my god, my hero. <laughs> is it the knife feels like justice? It was a Brian Setzer solo album. No. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was his in between phase. Stray Cats were done for a while before he started oh. the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, and I go. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> It, we'll just like it was like that one away. <laughs> yeah, and I I sold it. It was just like yeah. it, it 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 lacked what I thought he was what he's all about. Right. And I understand sometimes people want to, you know, try different things and show their other abilities, but it was yeah. like, mm. yeah. Which one was that? Knife feels like justice or huh. I think it's feels not cuts. If it's I've got one not cuts having a nervous knife. breakdown. Oh no, that's Brian that, Adams, that that another is. Canadian. That's an, it's another. <laughs> Yeah, but do yourself a favor. Don't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for saving me some internet time. Yeah, there's a Skinner album out there too that I don't really, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Some, I mean, newer stuff that they, yeah. you know, 
But I mean, you can't really look at it as the same band either. No. Really. Yeah. That whole southern rock thing is like an inbred. I mean, I don't mean to say that <laughs> that way. That came up. But seriously, I mean, there's people from every southern rock band that are like, ch- 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 you know. Yeah. Um, I really I kind of agree. It's like a huge, huge family, and they just keep, you know, here. Rotating dudes in and out. Cousin Billy come over and play with us for a while, and Johnny, you go over there. And, yeah. yeah. That's a very creepy analogy. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I can't believe that I'm publicly saying no, it's that. No, well, it's like we live up here. So we're what are we going to do? We got a third CD we're going to be working on. What's going to happen if that's the one? I don't that know. People are like, oh, that sucked. Holy shit. What were they doing there? For you guys, what makes the album disappointing and what makes it like, for me, it's either they've gone too far off the beaten path with what they're known for or it's too safe. It's like it's right in the middle. It's it's either one of the two for me. I don't know. I think it's when they go too far in a different direction. Yeah, and they've where, lost sight of what they were. I mean, like I said, well, I'll I, scratch I, the violins on the next. Yeah, one. I get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the French horn, please. All right, and I get that whole thing about listening to the album like <laughs> yeah. you know four or five times to kind of yeah get a you know let it hit your palate and understand what it is they're doing i mean that's happened to me with a few different bands not just rush i mean there's been a few that i've had to listen to that it takes a minute yeah you know to and then you appreciate it but in and a lot of times they've done that where they've gone so far but i mean there's a lot of bands that yeah i don't know and i think they just go too too far too quick in another direction and i think that's the letdown on the other hand, too, if there's some hooks on there that are making sense, it'll grab you. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. So going the, going another direction isn't always bad. I guess it just depends. Oh, yeah. You know, they it depends they on all what. Sound the same too. Yeah. Like across the board. ACDC's it's like you had could have just had a year long song. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, our our second album has a lot of diversity within the music that's yeah. on it. It doesn't all. Not every track sounds the same, and that drives me crazy, I guess, too, when you get an album and it's like, holy shit, I mean, yeah, is this the same song? Didn't mm-hmm. I just hear this on yeah. track one when I first, you know? Yeah. yeah, there's songs off the second album that do change, like the Battle of Ed, Ed Gein changes it up quite a bit, and there's, like, different styles, too, which I like. It's cool. I think yeah. it should, it's though. I mean, it's the same way. Melody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we've established the fact that we know three or four chords, <laughs> but you know why can't you have a little fun and, and be in that vein without going you know instrumental and right right you know right yeah. oh Weezer's another one that I like but then they've had a lot of albums that just shat the bed yeah yeah like the most recent stuff the teal album or whatever yeah the covers album that people are somehow eating the shit out of and it's like they're just doing covers verbatim the same way the song was except Rivers is singing on it. The lead singer Weezer singing it. That's right. the only. It's the same song. Right. Same structure. Yeah. It's just. It's kind of weird. You almost get the impression that they're playing it and just like, okay, this is what you you want, internet. Okay. Yeah. You know, like even they are not like sold on it, but yeah. it's selling. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And like I went to like uh, get dinner somewhere and they kept playing tracks off it. People were putting it on the jukebox. I'm like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, but Somebody think, was a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think that's gonna that album's gonna stand the test of time. It's just like, oh, remember yeah. when that was a thing? People kept giving it crap. Yeah, but it's like if you want tacos, go get tacos. Don't get a taco pizza. Right. If you yeah. want pizza, get pizza. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's the way I see it, anyways. Yeah. Tacos sound good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gilly better toes. Tacos rule. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do uh, one more topic? And yeah, then one more topic. One more topic. All right. You are the uh, you are the man. All right. The topic. And what every episode it takes us like five fails before we're like, yeah, oh, there's this like is the a, right question. there's like a curse on that we'll always get like five really terrible topics right, right before the end. We've done okay tonight, I think, with topics. Yeah, I think I'd say. Yeah, so. it, it usually works like that. It just like How yeah, it, you, you'll see because yeah. it never fails. Yeah. <laughs> this and, is the one. Any movies where you feel the soundtrack ruin the film? Hmm. Is that a yes or a no? Do we? Yes to that one or fail? We gotta yeah, make the fail. last yeah, one. Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say no. Yeah. See, like like that. You, yeah, it's gotta be the rough ones that yeah. always come up. Why do so many people hate Nickelback? <laughs> 
been clapping oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Moving right along. <laughs> Greatest bassists of all time. Hey, let's go with Ooh, that. Okay. I'll talk about that. Alright. Yeah. Billy Sheehan. Monster no. bassist. Again, Getty Lee. Yep, Getty Lee. Victor Wooten. Uh what band? He's a he's a, he's a solo. Jet. He used to be with Bella Fleck and doing oh, okay. the, the butt tone that guys. Yeah. I gotta say Jimbo from Morton Heat. Oh, oh, that guy. He's just he's fun pretty to watch. cool. Yeah. Can't forget about Primus, Les Claypool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah Les. Did you work that show? Yeah. I thought I loved Crown Lands. Holy oh, crap. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, they're really good. You know, we were talking about that other band that's getting all the Great about Fleet, but yeah, Crown yeah. Land should be the one that's getting all that attention. Oh my god. Yeah. I when I first heard them on the radio on the crow yeah. the other day, I'm like, holy shit, is that that band from the district that I had? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. They were phenomenal. Yeah. I and cannot next... believe a two piece. Yeah. You know, I'm like, they need one more member and I think they could really yeah. go out the and the next something. month they ended up opening for Jack White. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. In stadiums. So it's now like, are they are they still running as a two piece or I think so, yeah. I wonder if, if they add another member, if they'd actually... I think they would. I think that's the key, but I think it's going to be really tough um, to bring another member in that would that would know their place with yeah. what they're doing because dude's got it down, whether he's on guitar or bass, and his, yeah. you know the vocals are right there. I mean, so it's just going to take somebody to pretty much you know join and, and know their spot, I think, with yeah. that band. But. Yeah. You guys, I'm sorry. That's there was okay. this phenomenal band that they were a two piece that opened for Primus and they're out of Canada. And you would yeah. <laughs> you would yeah. think that you were listening to Rush or Led Zeppelin. And they did covers from both. With only the two guys there. With only the two guys there. Two guys there. Don't you know? <laughs> but they did it. And I mean they did it well and they had uh, some of their originals and stuff that they were doing too, and it was really just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Um Back to the bass players, though. I have always thought, and I'm going to mispronounce his last name because I can't remember if there's an R in it or not in the last name. Leon, is it Wilkerson or Wilkerson with Leonard Skinner? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. He was busy remember. without being distracting. Oh, yeah. If you listen, you listen to, uh, gosh, anything, listen to Freebird. He's got some cool runs going on there, yeah. but it doesn't. You've got a band full of people that are easy to, I mean, you know, it's pulls you here, there. Uh, Give me three steps. He does some great stuff in it. He's just, he was really good at being busy again without making you go, unplug this guy. It's, yeah. it's in the way of everything. And it wasn't, it just added to everything. Yeah. Phil Linet. Yeah. Phil Lizzie. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Oh, Phil. Yeah. Wow. I miss yeah. Phil Lizzie. Any of those Motown bass players from back in the day, or, or Elvis's Bootsy bass Cowan. player from the seventies specifically? Ooh, I got some funk in me. I, yeah. I like some. Who was Elvis's bass player from the seventies? I, I just listened to Burning Love. Like, yeah. I had to turn the bass up in my car to see what that guy was doing. I'm like, wow. He was doing he a little was bit extremely of... busy on that song. Yeah. Peter Hook from uh, Joy Division and New Order. Yep. Yeah. I always liked what he did. He was kind of the heart and soul of those bands. It's like a lot of the songs, I like them, but they just seem really lifeless, but the bass makes them actually exciting. Yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. The, the guy that was Elvis' uh, uh, bass player, Jerry Oburn Chef. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That rings a bell. Yeah, his uh, his whole band back in the, in the, well, up to the end there. In the seventies, when he was doing all the Vegas stuff and everything, it's pretty Burton impressive. On yeah. Guitar, hmm? Burton on the guitar. Yeah. Ronnie Todd on the drums. Yeah. Ronnie Todd. Ronnie Todd. Oh yeah. I'm gonna throw this one out. I'm gonna contradict myself here. <laughs> oh, From an God. earlier comment, he, he, he's not great, but I felt he was also very unique. Gene Simmons. No, Gene is is really cool. You listen you to his bass know. parts. Yeah. What, you know, this is back when everybody's still doing a lot of the eighth note, just yeah. riding with yeah. the chord, but he's got a do 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 Yeah. It's a, that, that was different. And Bruce yeah. and I were talking about that just recently, too, about, you know, and when you got into the later albums, yeah. the later, or the midway, I guess, of yeah. Kiss's career or whatever, um, he was doing some really cool shit. Yeah. A lot of really cool shit. Yeah. I mean, it's not that they couldn't play, but they were, they did start off 
keeping it simple, whatever. You know, I mean, it was very simple, very straightforward. And then I think after they, they were established and they were able to do. And then there were some member changes that changed things up too. People can go either way with however they feel about that. Peter Chris, I think, was awesome. But he was a, a big band, you know, very top yeah. beat type traditional. of Traditional. <laughs> Probably <laughs> traditional. And then, he you know. I did this a few times. <laughs> <laughs> or did he have to? <laughs> After what I saw. Well, there's actually. Who a was the bass player for Pat Travers off the Crash and Burn album? Mars somebody. There's a couple of Kiss albums that also. For, I forgot about these albums that don't get a lot of love is Revenge from 92. Yeah. Around the grunge era because that yeah. album got overlooked because of that. Because of, yeah. And that album, like Domino, is a great song and Unholy. Yep. That, those are cool, like heavy, darker Kiss tracks. Oh, yeah. And the best ones are the Gene, the ones that Gene sings, and not right. Paul. Like. Right, right. Did you see that thing where they were saying, uh, was it CNN? Who was it that said? Oh yeah, it was Gene uh, Simmons, the former lead vocalist of Kiss. <laughs> they had. Yeah, I posted that on that their internet. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was back when the shutdown was going on, and they were interviewing Gene and Paul because they were donating food or something yeah, to, yeah. to government, was it TSA employees or right, something? Right, yeah. furloughed employees. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were donating this, you know, and yeah, you know, and there it was, Gene standing next to Paul, and it's a Gene Simmons, former lead singer of KISS, and no. I, I I found it, and I snipped it, and I shared it. <laughs> <laughs> when are the lawsuits going to start? Yeah, yeah. No shit. When is Gene Simmons or KISS Inc. going to own CNN? Right, yeah. Because right. <laughs> K I S S N. Kissing. Kissing. That's I forgot all about like that. T-Kissing. See, that's the way. It is. <laughs> I feel like I can only vastly improve their their uh, lineup and uh, content. Yeah, it could Kiss be. Kiss or uh, CNN. <laughs> God damn, Rocky Road. I'm gonna answer damn. yes. Well, yeah, I'm gonna say yes on both fronts. Oh, <laughs> the best vocal moment in Kiss history is at the end of God Gave Rock and Roll to you, and Paul goes, "I know life sometimes could be tough." <laughs> And I know life sometimes can be trash, but we've been given a gift. We've been given a road, and that road's name is Rock and Roll! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta tell ya! I was wondering where he got his accent. This guy's from New York. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I own a whole album of Paul Stanley's stage banter. It's called Let Me Get This Off My Chest. Really? Oh, it's a photo of Paul's chest Just. on the cover, and it's wow. like all of them are like him saying how much he loves Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> oh my God, Richmond, you made us feel welcome. <laughs> like all this, like we did a show. <laughs> I did a show with our with the other band I'm in. We opened for a Kiss tribute band, you can, and they were Kissology. <laughs> Right, feel, feel free. And, they, and the one guy, he passed. Okay, called a vengeance. This band, yes, I'm in that band with my wife. <laughs> anyway, so we did this show. We opened for the Kissology band, and uh, God, for the life of me, I can't remember his name. But anyway, the Gene Simmons guy just recently passed away. Yeah, yeah and that's too bad. He was a really cool guy out of Omaha. We did that show with them, and then we went down with the Rocket, did some shows in Omaha, and this guy would show up. That guy. Yeah, yeah, and he'd be yeah, dressed up awesome. as Gene or whatever, and it was so okay. bizarre, I would run into him all the time, yeah. and we'd chat online and everything. But anyway, so he had that lisp, oh, the that. Paul Stanley lisp, Yeah, and he was singing most of the songs. The band was kind of, they were pretty authentic as far as showing, you know, doing a tribute band, yeah. but like the wrong people were in the wrong parts and they had an extra you know person on guitar and yeah. just weird shit yeah anyway really cool people but yeah that that whole thing about yeah. where did where did the accent come from this guy had paul's accent and i don't know where it came from but yeah. i think the lisp has a little bit to do with it and a lot of people don't realize that's there but yeah. it is yeah another great band to roll i have one too before yeah. love gun yeah, a little bit the song <laughs> It's about my six shooter of sex. <laughs> yeah. I remember laughing. Let's go! Shut up. Yeah. That great triplet pentatonic scale solo.
<laughs> you guys seen Role Models? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's been a while, yeah. Oh, it's a... Uh, Sean William Scott uh, has to court order to take care of this kid, and he's showing him his Kiss records and all this stuff, and he plays Love Gun. See, the gun's his dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about fucking. <laughs> and then the kid's just like, he's like, hates like. Yeah. I actually took my kids to see that in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my my kids are. aren't right. <laughs> Wonder no, why. No, another side note about <laughs> Kiss. I love uh, the Ace Fraley solo record. Like, yeah. Like seventy eight. The rest of the solo the, records. The, yeah, the four yeah. solo. I own that one on vinyl. But the rest of them just like, eh. Like, I, I actually got all of them, all four of them. Yeah. The Ace one is my personal favorite. Yeah, mine too. Ozone and New York Paul's Park. got a really cool one, I think. <laughs> I but you got that's one of those where you got to listen to it and yeah. realize, okay, this is a solo, yeah. and. Separate entity. Right, right. Yeah. Got to get past the lift. Remember, yeah, right. <laughs> remember the elder? Oh, yeah. I had that one. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember watching a bunch of Kiss documentaries like VH1 used to air the crap out of those all the time, and Sebastian Bach hosted. Them. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, no, Sebastian Bach's another one I loved in person. He's like, dude, how could you not listen to Kiss, man? It's like the best band of all time. Yep. Come on. And then Sebastian has a story about one time he ran into Phil Anselmo in a bathroom once and looks down at Phil's dick in the stall and goes, Holy shit! (laughs) And then Phil looks up and goes, You should see my dad's. This is the uh, PG-13 episode. Of yeah, clearly. Yeah. Dress code. We fully earned that explicit rating tonight. There you go. There you <laughs> go. normally keep it on a more PG? Nah, no. you say whatever. Good God, but, no. But this is the most I've said dick jokes in a, an episode in a while. So. There you go. I don't know. You, like, Maybe? Like, yeah, you've had a, you'd have had a few that pushed Certain it. Certain episodes. Yeah. But it's the internet, so who cares? Right. Exactly. There's no FCC. Right, and Robert, you saw my stand-up set last week. I've been trying to write cleaner material. And then the process, I wrote the dirtiest joke I've ever written. Yep. (laughs) So I do this whole parody thing on masturbation, like songs from the 80s, and just turn them into songs about jerking it. Like, it's just like, you can't. (laughs) That's a good bit. (laughs) There were enough songs from the 80s about that anyhow. There were about that, yeah. I just died in the night. See, died is coming. (laughs) Well, why the arms? Why the arms? Oh, you collapsed because of uh, exhaustion. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, there was... I could do a whole five-minute set she just like... Cindy Lopper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do a whole five-minute set explaining each song, like, dissecting them. So, like, she bought is about a girl doing it. And, and like, then I died, come. <laughs> like, there you go. And then, like, one song, <laughs> come, come on, Eileen. Come on, Eileen. <laughs> yeah. come on, Eileen. Oh, I swear I'll be clean. No. <laughs> See, I think I'm out with you. It's like, we both just do it together. I don't know. It could be. Stop the world and fuck. There's the, and there's the obvious one. <laughs> By the vapors. Oh, turning turn Japanese. Japanese yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, dun, dun, I got your picture, though. <laughs> your picture. <laughs> or, uh, I can do that on the internet. Yeah. Remember <laughs> when... Uh, Rick Moranis did a j- lounge jazz version yes. of Turning Japanese yes, on SCTV. Yes, I do. Turning Japanese. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. Her, uh, what the hell, Captain Kirk with his stuff. Oh, yeah. What the hell's his name? William Shatner. William Shatner. Yeah, William Shatner. Rocket He's Man. A... Rocket. Yep. Yeah. I just packed my bags last night, pre-flight. <laughs> yeah. Zero hour. <laughs> I am. And I'm gonna be <coughs> high. <laughs> As a so high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all smoke. See how bass is so uh, high. <laughs> Yeah. Where it's did we path. go here? We went off like a path a, really. I think I took it going off the path. It's like going down to Sioux City and it's telling you to take the exit in like, you know, seven tenths of a mile. And like, Bullshit, we gotta go now. <laughs> I did that last night. Yeah, I did night. too. I did too. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, they're still working on this? I remember like sneaking out in Eight my years dad's ago car we were and driving down there the when I was The pyramids 18. were done by now. Yeah. <laughs> they really got too far. So uh, she, she John was, Paul Jones? Oh, yeah, John Paul I'm Jones. I was thinking about John. He's always been a state. Geezer Butler? And yeah, oh, hell yeah. And Geezer. 
Oh, yeah. Antoine 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 Antoine. Antoine. Yeah. Who was that? Did you did you look up that bass player from Pat Travers Crash and Burn? Uh, no, but I can. No, he's on Mars, board. Mars, somebody. And you got a name like Mars. Nick Oliveri from Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. Very punky, but like yeah. very screamy. He gave that band their edge. That was kind of like... And he came to town last month. That was pretty cool. There was like 30 people there. That was such Where a was he at? At Icon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those like first two or three Queens of the Stone Age albums were my favorite because he just gave it that yep. ballsy edge and then they fired him and then... I like the albums after that, but it's not the same. Yeah. Like Peter Mars Cowling. There you go. Yeah. That guy, another one of those, you know, diamonds in the rough or yeah. overlooked people, whatever. Randy Newman. She's <laughs> <laughs> really great. Uh, <laughs> uh, playing the lower piano notes. That's what what, there you go. Yeah, that's what I meant by that. Bass. Hey there, lady. Yep. Eating hey. on an apple. <laughs> Star Wars. Everybody loves the Star Wars. <laughs> now she's gonna bite the apple. No, no, she's not. Clearly, <laughs> I will go sailing oh, no God. more. <laughs> Strange oh, things are happening to me. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Strike people got <laughs> my naff rolled in there. Hey Naff. Nice. <laughs> I didn't know we could watch what people were doing. Oh yeah, no yeah. comment. Oh I, shoot. I missed the whole thing. Missed my birthday uh nephew's birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. Happy, happy, happy birthday, birthday Adam, Adam for about ten years. That's what he said. Yeah. 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 Hey Adam. Hey Lee. <laughs> But yeah, well, you, what the hell? We should have been looking at this. Yes. Whole you get home. It's fun to read the comments uh, after you. Oh, I'm sure. Show. It's super fun to because I don't. Yeah. I don't do technology. <laughs> you got no showing your age. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a showing your age show. <laughs> when you have us, I mean, we're old. I'm gonna cut off my arm, and you can count the rings. <laughs> No, this, this stuff was super fun because I like talking music with people, and a lot of the musicians we have on the show, they kind of just like to talk real briefly and just move on. Right. They don't, no. like, they don't like to dive. I've kind of, they don't like to dive It's one of the deep. more deep dives on music you've ever done. Yeah, whereas a lot of musicians, it's, they kinda, it's fun to talk to them, but they're kind of just like, yeah, they're, they're good. Next. <laughs> like, I think uh, anymore a lot of people are afraid to throw their stuff out, their opinion yeah. out anymore, and I, I'm Maybe it is the age. I, would, yeah. I don't care. I have that, fun. I don't I have give a shit. Age. All respect. That's my mom is constantly saying. I mean, I've got respect I just don't for everybody. Care anymore. It's that, like, mom, musically, please. but for me, it's like if performance stuff doesn't work out, I'd love to be like a music and uh, comedy historian kind of person. Like, just yeah, write about stuff and like that's whenever I listen to albums, I love to look at who produced it. Who engineered it? Who played on this track? Who played on that? Right, right. What was the thought process? 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 Uh, <laughs> process? Pop it works good. Yeah, it worked good. Words good. Uh, but yeah, I'm super obsessed with doing stuff like that in my free time when I'm not doing stuff. Like, I'm always just watching documentaries and right. kind of stuff about music. That's me my too. Favorite. About Bigfoot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bigfoot. Bigfoot Adam says thank it. you for the shout out. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How, how slow is the lag? Oh, there it is. There is no lag. Shh, don't talk about lag. There is no lag. The lag might. This, 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 what you're seeing right now is live. The lag. On, that's the lag on uh, okay, Facebook itself is pretty significant. That's why it's scaring me. I'm, that's why I keep it up here. Otherwise, it's on too uncanny, and people get distracted by how off it is. Yeah. yeah. I, or just don't look at it. That's what I'm doing. I'll look at it later. <laughs> don't look at it. Just like. <laughs> How are you? Well, let me show you something. Hi, <laughs> hi. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> oh. So, shameless plugs. Shameless plugs. So, the last part of the show, we just do shameless plugs. If there's things you'd like to promote, we just go around the couch and each person well, talks about what shows or any products. What do we got coming up? We got a couple weeks off. And then okay. March 2nd, we're at the Art and Iron event at the Fairgrounds, I believe. We really don't know where the hell it's at, but, but we're going to show up and play some music. We're going to be check playing out the courier will arrive with a sealed wax and <laughs> <laughs> instructions. Look here. We'll post it on our Facebook. Oh, <laughs> man. 
And then March 8th, we're open for the Super... I believe it's the 8th. Here, let's, let's not be inaccurate here, because I have technology. The Super Suck. It's not afraid to use it, no. Oh, very oh no shit. Yeah, the Super yeah. Sucker Ooh. Show. Let's find that there. <laughs> okay. That'll be an iconic event, I believe. I believe you're correct. Yeah. Meaning it would be at the Icon, icon. Lounge. Yeah. Yes. And also iconic. Kind of, yeah, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, it's either the 8th or the 9th. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, I thought it was the 8th. I've, I've got it on the We'll find out. It's the 8th or the 9th. We'll post it, okay? Who just seem to figure it out? Keep watching our webpage, uh, bigredrocketriot.com, and that's rocket, R A W K I T. And we'll link to your show page and our cool. uh, your band page and everything else on cool. social media on the show notes. Cool. So be March 22nd, right. we're at the Phoenix Lounge with the other brothers from Des Moines. Des Moines. Very cool. April 5th, we're at the Corner Pub here in Sioux Falls. Is that in the corner? Yeah. yeah, actually, uh, nobody, it is back it's in the corner. It's in the There's corner. a pub back there. In the <laughs> and, and a first time ever, we will be at the Grand Falls Casino on April 12th. Nice. Ooh, very cool. God, I've been, been a few bigger shows. <laughs> yes, and I will have to play behind a shield. You'll, yeah, you'll, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a house kit that I use there too, which I'm okay with. I can. Any money's going to be at Grand Falls this Friday. I saw that. I want to go, but I'm working the night shift at Hy-Vee. <laughs> he cleaned the you know, <laughs> I love that guy, but since the stroke, he's never really <laughs> recovered fully. No, yeah. Yeah. got two ticks and a pair of lice. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from an old friend of mine. <laughs> That's like a Ronnie yeah, thing. A Ronnie yeah, because he used to sing that at work when I worked with him. This is gonna be so. When he got, when he had the stroke, did he say, "Baby, hold on to me"? Oh, 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 boom. oh I'm going to hell. Jesus, I'm going to hell. We probably all are. The weather's nicer. <laughs> it's warmer. Yeah, I hope yeah. they have an open bar. <laughs> Fireball. Oh, well, no. if that's all I got. I he, guess I'll put up. Probably it. doing a little shaking. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man, a whole lot of. I'm yeah. making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Snapping her fingers. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Speaking about <laughs> shitty videos. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. up on the car. <laughs> just, just, just shaking. And at 16, you're like, <coughs> shaking. Oh. That video was. I remember that one, yeah. I did love the Eye of the Tiger music video because the singer was just like posed. <laughs> right. Like the waitress's singer. I know what oh, boys boy. like. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Squire. Oh, oh that video. Yeah. That video, yeah. That video. Rock You Tonight. Whatever it was. Rock that was. You Tonight. And that video yep. single-handedly yeah. killed his career. He yep. even admits it. Yeah. He's prancing around the apartment. Oh, look, you got to look it up at some point, Robert. Okay, what, what, what is this? Rock Billy, You Tonight, I think. Yeah, yeah by it's Billy Squire. Just I saw him in awful. concert yep. with Billy Iris. Or Donny Iris. Donny Iris. Donny Iris. Oh, God. Ooh, just oh, not Don oh, Imus. No, 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 just the, sc the frozen screen capture for the video was why I had to play it. <laughs> so, uh, Strap me it in. in. Rock me to it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny Ortega, for ruining my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was thinking wow. there for a second. I was like, <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> this proves right, you, gals, if, if you're going with a musician and you wonder what. Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap. Does he have worms? <laughs> if, your gal, if your guy doesn't want to dance as a musician, that's why, because we can't dance. Right. That's exactly right. He's Proof got worms, don't he? <laughs> Whoa! Wow. He's trying to rock himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was thinking here. I really don't. I mean, 
been pretty much successful up to this point. I seen Gilligan you know, do that on one of the choreography by Run. Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, whoa! Uh, <laughs> I can okay. tell you for sure. Uh, I'm not going here anywhere. Uh, I don't care what we what we got going on. It's not happening, boys. Damn, I kind of wanted to do our no. video like that. No, you can. <laughs> Let's do it. You ever seen one of those Dance videos the where all the band is not in the video? That would be the one where the drums. Oh, it's it's so much worse than that worms. <laughs> it's even worse than I remember. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to go back to it. That's the DNA of the century. It's like reverse jazz hands. <laughs> Oh boy. I tell you what. Oh, oh, Here's five Check minutes of a man laughing at another man. <laughs> <laughs> I think his bed broke. <laughs> Lost his footy. It's okay, he's 60 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm spent. <laughs> Single handedly wow. killed his career. Like I, I, would, I would believe it based on that. Uh, I'm sure yeah, he's going to uh, be playing somewhere in around town. <laughs> yeah, and then he'll be looking us up. Yeah. So I heard you guys were ripping on me on that. Uh, Dress code show. Yeah. <laughs> we could like, it's like, no, like dude, take it's clips of podcasts, put it on YouTube, just that section. <laughs> That's not. I mean, going back to what you said, a lot of times people don't want to talk or whatever. It's okay because I know that people are going to rip on me and, oh, and yeah. Nice. And so it's a, it's an even. It's a two way street out there, folks. So. You know, be a I mean, we're just show. being honest. Like I said, I got mad respect for everybody yeah. that's made it in the in yeah. the industry, and you the know, there's funny you, things. You, there's funny thing things be, that happen. You'd be flirting with the fair use rules and stuff like that. Yeah. The only reason we can do that is because we were directly commenting on the like video. Exactly. And so, yeah. So, yeah. It's queer. It'd be fun to do like a live mystery science theater kind of thing where you just watch music videos like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, rotate what? comedians or people that just oh, feel God, like yeah. they need to. Yeah, there are channels that do that, yeah. yeah, and that they'll they'll even have the fair use timer in the bottom. That's like they'll figure out where YouTube is at right now. Usually they'll say like ten minutes of like oh, a sure. like a thirty minute episode if they're doing a TV show or something oh, like sure. that yeah. is what they're allowed to play before they like. I don't have think to anybody can handle ten minutes of Billy Squire doing that. No, oh, I don't oh. think Billy Squire can handle that. Honestly, you know, <laughs> you look pretty. Tired. We love you, Billy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna start a Billy Squire tribute band. Well, there okay. you go. It's called Schooly Buyer. <laughs> No, it's called Rock Me Tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Smoothly Byron, the Rock Me Tonight's. Uh, There you go. Throw it out and get a perm. (laughs) Yeah. Because we're away. The permed mullet. Oh, yeah. Well, they stand stand away away from from the flashbots. (laughs) The only uh, shameless plugs I have this evening uh, Bosses does our open keg nights every Wednesday, 8 o'clock. Been filling up the place, which has been pretty cool. It's been very cool. Yeah. Eight bucks a cup for beer. People chicken. watch some watch comics. Yep, chicken. Watch pizza, pizza, comics. beer, comics, comics, uh, comedy, comedy, and uh, Snow Jam County Fest in a couple weeks. Kevin McDonald, two weeks away. Kids in the halls and we had very excited for that. Very cool. cool. Yeah, that, that that post that they've got up for it, where you sh- you share your favorite Kids in the Hall skit yeah. with him, it's just like had me go doing a little YouTube like rabbit hole of like yeah. my favorite bits with him in it. Yeah, and it's no one else lists it as their favorite, but mine is always the uh, the you know these are two performers and not two clearly insane individuals. Oh yeah. <laughs> so be That's sure so to pay, pay close attention. For when you're filling out the police report after this performance, leave. <laughs> Sizzler and Sizzler. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jerry, coppers. No, Jerry, that sounds like the police. Oh, that's even worse. Let's go, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, These two gentlemen, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> We're sisters, damn it. Um, oh. The other one I love is uh, the bass player skit, which is tying with our last topic. 
where Ken Mc- or Bruce McCullough is playing bass and Kevin McDonald pops up behind him and goes, no one likes the bass player. <laughs> Oh my God! Bass player Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. Oh yeah, Steve oh Harris. Yeah. yeah, couldn't let that go. Too. Yeah, we're gonna think of a lot of them after this is done. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, My my only shameless plug is that uh, auditions for if you've ever wanted to do a Rod Serling style narration for like a sci-fi horror anthology podcast, we are casting that right now. Mm-hmm. So get your Get your, your mouse over to the SueEmpire.com, fill out the form, and leave me a voicemail with a creepy message on it in the in your best creepy narrator voice. And, uh, yeah, we've had, like, 50 people apply for it so far. We've got some really good contenders in there, but there's always room for more. The form is open until the 22nd. So, I feel like if I were to do that, I'd just rip off Charlton Heston. It's like, oh, my God. You <laughs> <laughs> see Phil Harmon when he did Dirty Sex Talk as Charlton Heston? <laughs> I like my vagina. <laughs> I stare at it in the mirror. <laughs> I, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that we will find some parts for you in each case. Because I, I, I got like 50 cast cast yeah. members to cast. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Another one more before we go is yep. when Bill Hader does the uh, Keith Morrison from Dateline. But uh, he just always smiles at people's tragedy on day like, <laughs> oh, yeah. what happened? <laughs> <laughs> then I lost both my legs in the shark attack. Oh, my. Are you, are you smiling? No. I'm horrified. I'm horrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. And then he shot me. Shot you a dirty look? No. With a bullet. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And, and with that, everyone. Anyways, uh, Steve, Johnny, Rod, thank you guys for being on the thank show. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. And as always, you've been watching The Trash Show.